So for today's project, uh, I'm just gonna show you folks what I personally do for a pre-season maintenance check uh, on you know any typical, any sled I own, but in particular this, uh, this one here, it's a 998 Turbo uh, Articat Cross Country. Uh, as you'll notice, I do have the seat off it, topping up the battery. Uh, that is one thing I usually try and do. And uh, I'll just kind of go through touching the high spots of uh, what I do to uh, ensure that this sled is hopefully going to run for the season and not have any issues. I try to touch on all the important stuff or what I feel is important. And, uh, you know, for the sake of a few bucks, there's certain parts I change just to know that it's new. And uh, I'll show you that now. So the first thing we're going to start with is removing all the panels, including the top panel, which is your headlight and uh, whatnot here, everything. So now with all the panels off, first thing I do is remove these boot stops from both sides. Uh, it's a 225 Torx, two screws here, two underneath. Uh, we'll get both those out of the way. And the next step will be dropping your engine oil from both from here and uh, the chain case. I guess that's not engine oil, that's chain case oil. And also the next thing we'll do is take the panel off underneath the sled. Four Torx, I think they're T30s. Uh, we'll get that off to get the uh, oil from the engine or what's I'm going to call it an oil pan even though it really isn't but we'll get the oil oil out of the motor another thing another thing I should mention is uh, your reverse actuator we got that t25 out you could take the three screws out here uh, undo your wiring harness and uh, pop that up out of the way as well now another tip I'm going to add is when you unhook your harness from your actuator just be very careful these right here my opinion are not held on there by a lot. I think it would break off fairly easily. And, uh, you know, sometimes they come out quite stubborn. They're a waterproof connection. Uh, what I've had to do is make sure you have this pushed down in completely all the way before you push the little tab in here, sorry, in here, uh, to pull it back out. Um, sometimes they can be a bit stubborn, a little bit of patience, and just, again, be careful you don't uh, break this. I believe that's a $300 Canadian part, probably more than that now, COVID prices. So uh, just be careful with it. So with that out of the way, just pay a little bit of attention to how everything's oriented here. And uh, we have to remove this, which there's a spring in here. I just uh, would take a screwdriver or sometimes even pliers. You might even be able to get it with your hand, which I can. Uh, pop this right on out. Be careful not to drop the spring or lose it, which I did drop it, but luckily did not lose it. And the next step is to pull this out, which you're probably going to need a set of pliers for. Try not to turn it, just pull it straight out. So here it is. I've got this out. Again, don't turn it. As you can see, it meshes with a slide gear in there, which actually actuate your forward and reverse. And uh, anyways, as we're putting this back together, I'll show you a little tip I try to do to make sure that... Uh, you get this oriented in the right place. But uh, regardless, this is where you have to fill your chain case through this hole. Uh, do I like the design? No, but it is what it is. So uh, that's what we'll have to do. So you, anyway, just be careful taking it out. And uh, I'll go through a little procedure before we put it all back together just to make sure, just in case you did twist this by mistake, just to make sure that it's still oriented in the right place. So now to the drain in the oil part. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a drain plug right up the very top right here. Yes, uh, you can't, still can't see it. That's the screw holding this on. Anyways, there's a drain plug right here. Stupid spot, absolutely. I uh, don't care about that design either, but it is what it is. So you take your 14 millimeter, loosen the drain plug, just finger tight. Now what I've done, because if you don't do what I'm doing here, it's gonna make a huge mess. The oil just runs all down through the belly pan and uh, you know, there's felt and foam in there for noise reduction and heat and everything gets saturated with oil. It's right beside your muffler, uh, just stupid. There's a whole bunch of things that could happen there. So do not do that. What I would recommend is get yourself an old water bottle. Uh, this one here, I cut a big groove out of it. There's a hole on this side. So the idea is I slide it in underneath the drain plug and it drains out through this hole into a catch can. So yeah, we go in like so, run out through the hole into a catch pan, which I do not have sitting here yet. Highly recommend doing that. 
make your life easier. Hopefully, your sled won't burn down the road as a result of a bunch of oil that just got laid in there and uh, didn't get cleaned out good. And here it is. Hard to video and hold this with one hand, but here it is running out my hole in my floorboard. Hopefully not creating much of a mess. Right, she just finished and draining. Another little tip I'm gonna add. Typically, I do not take this plug out uh, while I'm draining the oil. And the reason is it allows the air to get in there and the oil can come out a lot faster and it may come out faster than the bottle can get rid of. So by leaving the plug in, I get a little bit of control over that. And uh, again, just stops from the mess. So while that's uh, draining out, I'm just gonna look my clutches and belt over and uh, uh, kind of service a little bit on that side of the sled. So this sled, basically when I get done riding it, put a little fuel stabilizer in it and put it away. These clutches have not been cleaned. They have not been looked at. Same with the belt, nothing. Uh, 10,300 miles on these clutches. Both came on the sled. Been zero, zero issues with them or belt life. Uh, I'm actually kind of blown away. Yeah, I mean, they're running pretty big power. So uh, anyways, one of the first things I'm gonna do is get that belt off. Uh, I'm gonna actually remove the rear clutch completely and uh, I will spray everything down with brake cleaner. Primary wise, get that all cleaned up real nice. I'll rub some emery, or not emery cloth, just some scotch bright in, in your sheaves. You'll see you get a little bit of, uh, I don't know we'll call that corrosion or what exactly that is, just from sitting all summer in the trailer. Get everything cleaned up real nice and uh, then we'll uh, go in for a further inspection on things. So here we are on the underside of the sled. Uh, I'm gonna pull the drain plug under here, which is this one right here. Uh, make sure you use the right size Allen key. I believe it's metric at number five. Here's your oil filter. Uh, I would say drain the oil first and then take your filter off. Again, trying to save some mess. So now I'm back over here at the clutch side. Uh, what I've done here is there's actually a snap ring in here. I've popped that snap ring off and I've actually pulled the seal off of this bearing. And what I like to do is it's a good way to inspect the bearing uh, to see about failures. Uh, and it's a good way also to re-grease it. Some guys will take spray this out with brake clean, uh, you know, several times, rinse all the old grease out and then put new grease in. That's fine too. Uh, typically, I won't really go that far. Uh, the next thing I do while I'm over here is I remove this guard. Uh, we'll split the brake caliper in half and I'll actually remove the rotor. And uh, as part of my preventative thing, uh, these machines are known for this drive shaft actually wearing. And it wears because the uh, bearing is not actually fixed on the shaft. The, tyrants, or the tolerances are kind of loose. So what happens is the shaft as it's spinning may be spinning at a different rate than the bearing is and eventually will wear the drive shaft down. So uh, there's two things I do. And I'll explain that a little bit later, but first of all, you gotta get all this stuff out of the way. And there's three bolts to remove your entire caliper on the inside of the tunnel and we'll pull that all off. So the guard is off, the guard that was here. So now I'm gonna remove this snap ring and these two Allen bolts. And yes, you are gonna lose a little bit of brake fluid. But for now, I would recommend keeping your cover on the reservoir. This is your reservoir. Leave the cover right on it. It'll actually uh, stop uh, all of it from leaking out. So now, just removing the very last bolt in the caliper. The brake pads and your little pin that holds them in are going to come too. The big thing you got to be careful is not to lose that o-ring right there. That's what seals your uh, brake caliper, the two halves together. So just be careful you don't lose that or get that dirty. So now with the caliper out of the way, you can see uh, we're leaking some oil, of course, but these are the three bolts are on the inside of the tunnel. We have to get out in order to get this caliper to slide off the shaft. Uh, this bearing here is the one I'm talking about that's, you know, a little bit suspect. There's no way to lock it onto the shaft, or at least not from the factory. But I am soon gonna show you what I do, and it seems to be, seems to be working. These bolts are gonna be a little bit of a pain in the ass as well. Uh, you might wanna loosen off your track tension. That'll take pressure off the shaft and it will make it easier. Maybe not so much coming out, but when it comes time to put those bolts in, it will make it a lot easier. So this is a better look at the caliper and the bearing. Uh, you can see all kinds of, well, it's just fine dirt. 
uh, around the seal. But if you'll notice, my caliper will not just fall off the shaft. So what I've done is I've made a puller that will come in here, take these three bolts, it's just a piece of plate is all it is, with three pieces of threaded rod, uh, metric, I can't even tell you the thread right now. Uh, you just tighten those in, it slowly pulls this until the, uh, what I've used is Loctite bearing mount on this shaft. Clean the two surfaces up, put them together. Uh, stuff works amazing. And it's saving this drive shaft and it's hopefully saving a uh, costly repair in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I'll put my puller on it, pull this off. I'll show you the puller, but I can't video and do this at the same time. I only got to the two hands, of course, but uh, I'll show you what I do once I get this off. So here we are with the new bearing in. And of course, after all that, I realized I did not get any video of that. For that, I do apologize. Uh, you do need to be careful with that bearing. Uh, it's just aluminum housing. So, uh, you know, to take your time and be gentle with it would be something I would highly recommend. As you can see there, I didn't nick that housing a little bit. It just kind of demonstrates how soft it really is. So uh, anyway, just be careful with that one for sure. You don't want to end up breaking that caliper. Uh, probably a pricey item. Now this top bearing, I just uh, blew it out. With some brake cleaner. Uh, took some time and uh, repacked it with fresh grease. Put the seal back in. Now I'm going to put the snap ring in both that and the caliper and uh, start putting it back together on this side. Uh, one little tip I've got, if you ever take this apart, I would recommend doing it before your uh, Loctite hardens on your shaft down in here. And uh, the reason is I've run into this a few different times that uh, once you put this back together, you can't get the snap ring on. The caliper is too close to the end of the shaft. And what can possibly happen is, is the tunnel, the tunnel itself will actually spread from side to side. So what I do is I took a ratchet strap from this side, you know, under the tunnel over to the other side, put a little pressure on it. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to make a big difference. So uh, that's one little thing I've run into before and uh, I thought I should mention. So here it is back together. Uh, snap ring is installed back in the top, bottoms back together. Uh, turns out I did not have to pull the tunnel together. Nothing moved. Um, one thing I will say, Make sure you put your brake pads in the correct way so that the lining is actually facing the disc. Uh, that was one nice little surprise I found after a trip to the dealer. Uh, you know, luckily nobody was hurt. Uh, I don't have any faith in our local dealer whatsoever. Another little surprise, I don't know if you can see that back there, those are pry marks from where they took the caliper off and uh, you know, dented the tunnel all in. There's actually some in the bottom there you're probably can't see. Uh, very simple little tool I made once your once your rotor was off. I don't know if I showed this already. It's just a little plate like so. Goes on over the end. It was right in your four or your three holes that actually hold the caliper on anyway. And then you tighten the outside nut up. A little bit of heat in that shaft and uh, the Loctite will release. Very simple, very effective, uh, you know, very low cost. But uh, I don't know if the dealer doesn't have the right tools. Maybe they don't run into this much. I don't know, but uh, yeah, the whole brake pad being in backwards was uh, something that really, really, it's probably the last straw with the dealer, my local one here. Uh, I know mistakes happen, but uh, that's a major safety issue. It should not happen. So now I got to clean up my secondary clutch, uh, doing a little inspection on my primary, and I'm noticing that my rollers are worn. Uh, this is something that must have came about midway through last year. Uh, last year's preseason, they were great. This clutch actually has about 10,500 miles on it, not kilometers. Um, I've had zero issues with it. It's been an excellent clutch. I know, you know, maybe opinions vary. Uh, that's mine. I have no issues with that clutch. I actually have a new clutch on order. No, it is not a team clutch. Uh, I'm gonna try something different and uh, see how it works out. So I will show you uh, the process. What I'm gonna do is put this slug back together. I am gonna clean this clutch up, so I probably will get it rebuilt. I'll either keep it as a spare or sell it. I'm not sure yet, but, uh, but what I will do is I am gonna clean all this up good. Uh, secondary, put the whole sled back together, and uh, I'm gonna do a little before and after comparison in another video uh, with my new clutch on this sled, which is a 998 Turbo. Um, 
and uh, we'll see uh, engagement RPMs and different things, just as a comparison. So here I am with the secondary on the workbench. Uh, what I'm gonna do first, I'll dig out my blow nozzle from my air compressor, uh, blow it all off, any dust out of it, inside and out. Uh, you can blow down in here and it will actually blow the inner parts out. And then what I will do is use some scotch Brite, clean up these surfaces, which actually don't look very bad. Uh, I just kind of get everything scrubbed down real good, uh, inside and out. And I'll make sure everything's dry from the brake clean good before I put it back on the sled. Uh, give everything a real good inspection and uh, that will pretty much be that so here we are i've got the clutches cleaned up secondary back on uh, now it's the perfect time to check your air filter that's pretty self-explanatory i like to clean things up i'll probably wash this all down with some brake clean just kind of clean it up clean the dirt and grime out uh, one thing i will highly recommend uh, anytime you're cleaning your secondary uh, the good thing to do is to do it with the primary or uh geez back that up here when you're cleaning your primary good thing to do is remove your secondary it gives you lots of room or do it before you put your secondary back on it gives you more room to kind of get in here and clean up your surfaces another thing you should never ever do on a four stroke sled is roll this backwards never do that always frontward uh, what can happen is you can actually cause the engine to jump time and uh, that is going to cost you a whole lot of money bend valves god knows what can happen so make sure you do never ever roll a four stroke sled over backwards only over frontwards or in the direction it's meant to turn which would turn this way your belt travels this way uh just be very very careful of that coincidentally i do have uh, another video where it shows i guess the procedure for setting the time in these sleds uh it's not something that's going to take you an hour i can tell you that much so uh Avoid all that, only roll this over frontwards. Uh, it'll surprise you how much belt dust will come out of a clutch like this. Uh, while I'm in here, I, again, I like to brake clean everything, let it dry real good before you uh, close everything up. It's highly flammable. Uh, so that should be pretty self-explanatory. So I know I've skipped a little bit here, but uh, I wanna get back to uh, filling this chain case up. Uh, you can see those teeth in there and what that is, that is the teeth that you're, uh, your gear that sits in this hole would ride against. And before you put, let's see here, one second. Now before you put all this back together, I want you to stick your finger in here, or what I do, and push that, push that way towards the center of the sled on that gear. And I actually try to reach down underneath and jiggle the track as I'm doing that. Now I won't be able to hold the phone and do it. Just to make sure that the gear is clear over all the way before installing this gear back into place so here it is got the gear in made sure it was in forward and uh, you know inserted this little detent in the spring down here in the bottom now I'm going to uh, put the actuator on and uh, the way we go so now here's the machine full of oil you can kind of tell maybe slightly over full uh, but I haven't started it yet kick plate back in place everything's self-explanatory just kind of put it back in the the uh, way it came apart uh, I've got the top on it here now a little thing I like to do when I start these after a fresh oil change I've had everything drained out sorry for the light um, I like to uh, push down the kill switch and actually oh, I don't have my key but actually whirl the engine over um, knowing that it won't fire and what that'll do is it'll actually help uh, prime the oil pump and maybe even prime the engine a bit so that uh, you don't get these dry starts and it starts and rattles and all that stuff rattling your uh, your valve train and everything so that's what i like to do i guess to each his own but it's one little tip i would recommend personally if i could so now i've had the sled running shut it off let it cool back down uh, do not be surprised if you add a little oil. Again, I might have mine uh, maybe a tad on the full side or over full side. But uh, anyway, so I guess the next thing to do, you want to check your runners. Uh, I always check my steering components for play. Uh, hopefully I don't have to take any of that apart again. But it's, I already know it's good. Uh, you want to check your carbides. Uh, with it up in the air, it's really easy to check your slides. Uh, any of your idlers. 
I usually just check this, I spin them, and if there's any sort of noise or play, uh, for the sake of a few bucks, change the bearing. So uh, I've already been all around this sled. I know it's good to go. Uh, slides are maybe getting a little close, but I've got a set right here on hand. I'll just keep an eye on them. And uh, when I do loosen the track off to check these, I'll make sure and double check these bearings. I did change all those last year, so they should be fine. And that'll pretty much be it. Uh, again, I do have another video kind of getting a little more in depth into the chain case. So that's why I didn't really get into it at all on this one. And uh, this sled now should be good to go. Periodically throughout the season, I'll give it a similar look over minus the oil change, uh, depending on mileage, of course. I have changed it before in the middle of the winter. Uh, I had a real good winter here a few years ago. 35, well, 30, yeah, 30 some odd hundred miles. And uh, so anyways, I end up changing the oil uh, midway through the season on that deal, but uh, Anyways, I think everything else is pretty good. And uh, that's basically the basics of keeping these machines going. These fluids and all this maintenance is the life of them. So uh, I'm kind of meticulous with what I do. Maybe a little more than other guys do, but uh, trying to prevent being broke down in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, tune in next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, again, I got a video coming on this chain case. That hopefully will be next time. Stay tuned.